Good morning. We are very happy that everybody is able to uh, join us this morning. Uh, we'd like to give a special welcome to the Donegal class of 1974. <clears throat> if this is your first time w uh, visiting us this morning, we have purple welcome bags in the back of the sanctuary. We ask that you guys grab one of those on your way out. Purple, green are for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in those purple welcome bags are connect cards we ask that you fill those out so we can stay connected with you and just put them in the offering um, box in the back since it's uh, youth Sunday we're going to do things a little differently so more of the announcements will be later but for now let's go to the Lord in prayer dear heavenly father Lord thank you so much for this time that we can just gather in your uh, your home um, God I just ask that you just bless this service and um, look over us this week. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Will you please stand up with me and we're going to start worshiping.
Well, good morning and welcome to Youth Sunday as we celebrate uh, our, our youth in various stages. And we're going to start by recognizing some that are, are phasing out of our, the youth stage. And so we're going to recognize our graduates. And so we have uh, four graduates this year, Maddie, Nate, Jaden, and Tegan. So if you guys can come up here, if you're here, I see th three of you. So you guys can line up here. I did not tell them we were going to do this so because I didn't want them to say no. But what I want you to do is, is introduce yourself, say who you are, what your plans are after school, and you guys can just pass that down. So I'm Madison Hendig, and uh, I graduated from Dunville High School on Wednesday. And uh, I plan after graduation to uh, take a gap year and then work to get money and go to college for nursing. Um, I'm Tegan Wagner, and I graduate on Tuesday. Um, from E-Town High School, and I plan on also taking a gap year and then going to cosmetology school. I'm Nate Screenack. I graduate from Dolphin County Technical School on Wednesday or Tuesday, and I just plan to work at Remco to do commercial HVAC service. All right, so as a, a gift to our seniors, we have uh, new Bibles with their names imprinted. So I've got to make sure I do this right. So, Maddie, there's yours. Tegan, yours. And Nate, there's yours. And so I just want to say a quick prayer for this group as they prepare for this next phase of life. So, dearly Father, we just thank you for uh, these three and for uh, this accomplishment that they are taking as they get to the next step of their life and move on to... Uh, their future. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to bless them. Uh, I pray that they continue to look towards you for guidance as they uh, make plans for their future and try and map out the rest of your life or their life. And Lord, we know oftentimes uh, our plans don't work out because you have different plans for us. And Lord, we just pray that they will constantly turn to you for direction on, on where they should go with their life. And we just pray that you bless them uh, through whatever decisions they make. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thanks, guys. And before you guys know it, you'll be coming to church for your 50th reunion, so enjoy it. So, all right, and so next, now that, now that we have ushered them out of the youth stage, we need to usher in the next uh, group that will be joining our youth group. So if our sixth graders that are moving up to seventh grade, I don't, don't see many of you. Addie, that's you. Don't be shy. I see you. Kaden, there you are. Come on up. Just you two. It's okay, it's okay, Addy. All right. So, if we go to the next slide, I think. No? Okay. All right. Never mind. Uh, so these guys have both been part of our Awana program, Joy Kid program on Sundays, and so now they are, they are moving up to our youth group. So starting, well, not this week because we don't have youth group on Thursday, but there we go. So starting uh, next week, you guys can start taking part in youth group. And so in a little bit when Bob dismisses the Joy Kids, you guys get to stay put and listen to me talk. <laughs> I apologize now. Next week it'll be better when Dick's preaching. So... But uh, so as a little welcome gift for you guys into youth group, we have uh, The Story, which is uh, intermixes Bible stories with uh, Bible verses. So it's not a true Bible, but it uh, gets, helps you get into the Word and learn different stories and things like that. So let me pray for, for you two uh, quickly here as well. So dearly, Father, I thank you for, for Addie and, and Caden and the other sixth graders that are moving up into our youth program. We're excited to to have them join us on Thursdays and uh, as we continue to, to dive into your word and, and grow in our faith. And so, Lord, I just thank, thank you for these two as, as they are making, taking the next step uh, in their growth as young adults. And uh, just pray that you continue to bless them as well. We pray this in your name. Amen. So that wasn't that bad, was it, Eddie? <laughs> All right, so we're going to enter into a time of communion. Does anybody, did anybody not receive the elements? If so, put your hand up and we'll get the elements to you. And Caleb is going to lead us through communion.
Uh, communion is open to all believers. You don't have to be a, men, a member of the church to be in communion here. Uh, Adam had uh, forgot to take the cups out on time, so yours might be. Okay, well, they might be a tiny bit frozen now. Uh, mine already melted. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 28 through, wait, 11, 28 through 29 says that we should examine ourselves before we partake in communion. So let's pray. First Corinthians eleven twenty three through twenty five says well first Corinthians twenty three says for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. So let's pray for the bread. Lord Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, and we pray that when you come back, that we'll all be believers and be able to go up into heaven with you, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord, and amen. <laughs> And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of, of me. Now let's pray for the grape juice. Dear Lord, I once again thank you for dying on the cross for us and the pain that you had to go through with your bleeding while on the cross, Lord. Thank you and amen. amen. After, after the same manner, he also took the cup when he had when he had s sipped, saying, this is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as, what? As, <laughs> as ye drink it in remembrance of me. talks about uh, the resurrection of Christ and the Great Commission, where basically after he rose from the dead, um, Jesus went back and he was speaking with his disciples, and he told them to make disciples of the nations. Um, 
with today being Youth Sunday. Um, and we're, you know, celebrating our graduates and everything. Oh, everyone's minds are on the future. Um, and with our minds being on the future, I thought that singing the commission, a song about the Great Commission, um, would be a good message to give to our young people and to everyone that's here today. Um, that as you go out into the world, that you should share the good news of Jesus um, so that others will know of God's love for them and that they might also come to be saved. So with that, we're going to sing the commission. If you're wondering about these little communion cups to go, we used to have plates. COVID changed everything. Another thing that COVID changed was passing our offering plates. You're going to see there's boxes out here. So those are for our offering. So we, you're not going to see the plates passed anymore. And I was telling the graduates that change has happened so much just by a worldwide pandemic. And so we as a body of Christ adjust to that and we allow the spirit to be working through us and uh, thank goodness for technology that we were able to do live streaming back then. The preacher would come in and do uh, the sermon. I would come in and do music. And then it was all woven together that you could watch it on the live stream. So I was telling the graduates, there's always change. You can make a five-year plan, but allow God to work his works in your life and go with the flow and be flexible. So, yeah, you're not going to see an offering plate, but I am going to be praying for the offering this morning. So pray with me. Father, first of all, we offer our lives up to you as a living sacrifice. Father, we're so grateful that you have called us and chosen us and selected us. But Father, we know that it's of our own free will that we look to you. We look to Christ as our Savior, as our Redeemer. 
And we look to your spirit who dwells within us to give us life. So first, Father, we offer up our, our lives as a living sacrifice. We want you to look at our hearts this morning and see that we desire to love you passionately. We desire, Father, to give you the love that you are so worthy of. And Father, we also offer up our sacrifices of praise this mor- before you this morning as the body of Christ. And we're so grateful that we can sing and make melody in our hearts to you and that you have given musicians words and notes that we can enjoy praising you and worshiping you with our lives. But Father, we also look to our offerings, our monetary offerings, and we know that you're all wise and all knowing. And we look to you, Father, to give us your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding and being able to take this money that's collected today and use it to bring you honor and glory, whether it's within the body of Christ here at the Mount Joy Church of God or whether it's in the community reaching out to those who are in need. We need your guidance and direction. So, Father, we continue our worship today. Uh, We're so grateful that you have given us your word to be our light in a world of darkness. And I pray, Father, that through the words that will be spoken this morning, that it'll generate more light within our lives, that we can go out, as the commission song said, and tell the world about you. Thank you, Father, for your power and your presence, and thank you for the power of prayer. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Not everything is in our bulletins that we do. And so uh, Allison agreed to help me with this next phase. Most of the time, Laura listens really well. <laughs> then there's other times I said, don't do anything on Sunday, that apparently she doesn't listen very well. Thank you all. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I do need to, to start with some uh, unfortunate uh, update first. Uh, one of our dear members, Charlotte Fackler, if you haven't heard, went home to be with the Lord on Thursday morning. Uh, Charlotte had spent the last seven years at the Elizabethtown Nursing and Rehab Center in Reims, where she was a faithful member of Martha Baxter's Hymn Sing every Monday, or every other Monday, and then our monthly Sunday service there at the home. Uh, She loved the Lord and loved to sing about Him. There will be a service celebrating her life Tuesday night at Sheets Funeral Home at 7 o'clock. Friends and family will be received from 6 to 7 before the service. So I wanted to make you all aware of that. So... But yeah, uh, welcome again to, to Youth Sunday. Uh, as I was thinking and, and planning this, um, I thought it was ironic but also kind of nice to have the, the Donegal class of 1974 here. I heard a lot, of, a lot of good stories about the class from Scott and Gary. Gary says he loved it so much that that was the best six years of his life. So. No, so we are, we are honored that you guys chose to join us this morning. So as I was thinking about the service, I wanted to try and give you guys a feel of what our Thursday youth services are like. So this isn't just Youth Sunday. This is actually, we're just going to call it Youth Group, uh, which is why I, I really hesitated to wear jeans to preach. I'm like, I don't, Dick might fire me if I do that. But it's what I wear on Thursday. So, uh, and Jamie and Melanie Peters had made us a bunch of the youth for Christmas presents, custom t-shirts. So this is the t-shirt they made me for, uh, for Christmas, and some of the other youth have some of their shirts on. Um, so wanted to acknowledge that. But when I start the lesson on Thursdays, the first thing I do is talk about upcoming events. So that's why we, had, we shortened the opening announcements just to do it youth group style. So here's our upcoming events uh, for, for all of you. Uh, so those of you that are prayer partners, reminder, we have the luncheon after Sunday school today. The, the youth are very excited to find out who their prayer partner has been all year. Uh, they've been asking me since we started this back in September, and I haven't slipped, I don't think, to anybody. So I was, I was surprised by that because I'm not normally good with keeping secrets. So uh, This Tuesday is the Bible to School Donegal fundraiser at Rita's. So hopefully you all join us from 5 to 9. A note to the elders, if the line is too long, I'll be late for the elders meeting because I'm not missing out on my Rita's. Um, 
so yeah, it's a great organization, so I would encourage you all to go to the Rita's here in Mount Joy to support Bible School Donegal. This Wednesday starts our discipleship class from 7 to 8. If you are interested in joining and haven't signed up yet, please do so on the bulletin board just for planning purposes. Uh, but if you forget to sign up and show up on Wednesday, we are not going to turn you away. Um, so that's here at the church from 7 to 8. Uh, you may have seen some of the backpacks we've already started to collect out in the lobby for Ray's. Their goal is to collect 600 backpacks for back to school um, for this fall, so you can bring those in between now and July 31st. Uh, coming up in just a couple weeks is the Ladies Craft Day on Saturday, June 22nd here at the church at 11 o'clock. 1 p.m. Thank you, Heidi. If you have any other questions or if I said anything else wrong about it, you can talk to Heidi about it. She'll correct me and get it right. So, uh, and then I hope you already have the, our movie nights on your calendar, but if not, just another reminder, Sunday, August 18th, we're going to watch War Room here at the church. This is a free event. Feel free to invite your friends. Um, if you are unfamiliar with this, War Room is about a, a movie about prayer and the power of prayer, and it's a, a bond a few ladies in a, the community in this movie form and centered around this prayer relationship. And it's, it's, it's a really good movie by the Kendrick Brothers. And then a week later, we're all going to go to Penn Cinema, and we're going to watch the Kendrick Brothers' new movie, which takes place in the same in environment. We have some of the same characters. It's not a true sequel, but it, it's kind of playing off of War Room, except this time, it's about men and prayer and some of the relationships and mentor relationships and things like that that form. At least that's what I've been told because I haven't seen it because it doesn't come out yet. But um, I'm excited for it. Uh, again, uh, that one is $13 per person. That includes your ticket to Penn Cinema. We'll have popcorn and beverages there as well for that. So you can sign up for that out in the lobby as well. And I noticed that sign-up sheet is getting full, so I need to get a second sign-up seat. We've rented the largest theater Penn Cinema has, so we've got plenty of room, so feel free to join us and invite your friends. And then uh, parents of our youth, during Sunday school, we're going to have our, our parents meeting, and we will go over all of the youth summer events that we have planned, which includes uh, a beach trip and some other fun things that you guys will learn about then. So I'll tell you about that. So also wanted to, to kind of give you a little bit of a background of what's been going on in youth group. As some of you know, this is my first school year being in charge of the youth group, having taken it over in September. And so one of the things I wanted to do is kind of give the youth a little bit more of an identity. When I took over, I started asking them some questions about the youth group. I'm like, do you guys have a name? Do you have a theme? And they're like, not really. There's some names that they used in the past, but they've all kind of gone by the wayside and things like that. So one of the things I did when I came up with this theme is kind of give the youth room a little bit of a makeover. So this is what it looks, used to look like. Uh, and you can tell I took this in December because the Christmas tree is in the corner. Um, so that's the one side. And then this is, oh, I guess I took one picture. I jumped too far. But uh, so this is, oh, it's going, it's going forward on me. Let's, so yeah, so there's, there's the other half. Uh, looking back at it. And so I thought it needed a little spruced up. So I came up with this idea of the courtyard, which is the theme of the, the name of today's message. And so, because um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to preach about the theme and why that I picked those verses for our theme. But so what we did is we tried to turn the youth room into looking more like a courtyard. So we put the, the stone there, which is really just a photo background that we put on the wall. And we put some greenery and some different flags and stuff up just to give it a little bit more of a, a spruced up look. This is our, our main meeting area. So parents, I could tell you specifically where your kid sits because just like most of you, you have assigned seats. And so not today, Allison, because yes, you got moved uh, because we have all of our special guests and you did so very graciously without too much complaining in the back. So, but, uh, but that's, that's where we meet uh, on Thursdays and we have our lesson and we have a lot of fun and things like that. So, so the theme I, I picked with this courtyard is John 18, 15 to 27, which is Peter's three denials. And you're like, well, that's an odd story to pick to theme a youth group after because it's really a story of failure. You know, Peter fails in his faith three times by denying Jesus. So why in the world would you pick that? So that's what I want to, to talk about and explain today. Uh, and for some of the youth, they've heard this because we did a three-week series on this. So hopefully anything they forgot off of that, they'll, re they'll be reminded of today. But, so we're going to look at the Apostle Peter and talk a little bit about 
his life and what led him to the courtyard where he has these three denials and then talk a little bit about the aftermath of what happens after that. So first let's talk about who was Peter. So we know from Luke 5 and, and John that he was, he was an ordinary fisherman. And the, the key here is he's not royalty. He's not anything special. He's just a normal average person that happens to get called by Jesus to be one of his apostles. In fact, Peter was one of the first apostles called by Jesus. And so as we go through this story, just remember, you know, this could be you just as easily as it was Peter. Nothing about Peter's story makes him any different than any one of us. So let's look at Peter's faith. And he very quickly grew in his faith and, you know, spending basically every day with Jesus. I would imagine that would happen a lot, but I want to look at three different aspects of his faith. First, the story where he walks on water. So this comes out of Matthew 14, 26 to 31. Now, just to set the stage here, the disciples are in a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee. It's about three or four in the morning, and it's storming out. So they are, they are paddling across the sea. At this point, they're about halfway across the, the, the Sea of Galilee, so they're probably tired because they've been paddling against the current with the storm, everything like that. And here comes Jesus walking on the water out to them. And then we pick this up in verse 26. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come out to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And so oftentimes, I think, we spend too much time focusing on that last verse where Peter starts to realize, I'm standing on water in the middle of a storm and waves, at three or four in the morning, and he starts to get scared, and so he starts to sink because he's losing his faith in Jesus. To me, the key of this story is verse 29, when Peter has enough faith to get out of the boat. John Ortberg wrote a, a book several years ago, and there's a really good small group study that Laura and I have done a few times, uh, that says if you want to walk on water, you have to get out of the boat. Peter was the only one of the apostles that had enough faith to get out of the boat. So why too often I think we focus on his, his quote-unquote failure at the end. This is actually a success story of Peter's faith because he's the only one that got out of the boat. I can just imagine what the other 11 disciples were sitting there going, are you going to try it? I'm not trying it, you know, that sort of thing. Because all they, well, we don't know exactly what they did or said because that's not recorded, but we know Peter's the only one that got out of the boat. So Peter had enough faith. The most faith is that first step getting out of the boat not what happens a little on down the road. Now, in the perfect world, would Peter have kept the faith and walked and not sank? Sure, but we need to commend Peter, and I think this demonstrates just how strong Peter's faith was, is that he was the one that was willing to get out of the boat. The next part of Peter's faith is he is one of the first ones to acknowledge and declare that Jesus, in fact, was Christ the Messiah. So we, a little later in Matthew, Matthew 16, we get this story where Jesus and the disciples are, are walking to Caesarea Philippi and said, when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. So Peter gets it. He knows exactly who Jesus is. And he acknowledges that. And this is one of the first recorded acknowledgments from the disciples that Jesus was, in fact, not just another prophet like some of these named here, like John the Baptist and Elijah, Jeremiah, etc. They recognized, and Peter specifically recognized, Jesus was different. He was the Messiah that they, the Jews had been waiting for. 
And we also know that Peter was one of the leaders of the apostle because every time the apostles are listed in the Bible, Peter is listed first. And there's, I had listed four examples there in your uh, outline. But here from Luke 6, uh, when morning came, he, being Jesus, called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he designated apostles. Simon, who he had named Peter, his brother Andrew, and then he, they go through the rest of the list. And so Peter is always listed first. And there's other times, other stories in the Bible where Peter, James, and John get to do things themselves. So they were kind of the, the triangle of leadership among the apostles, but Peter is right there with them. And so we know that Peter had a very strong faith, which leads us to his denials. A couple things we want to, before we look at the denial, is we want to acknowledge that Jesus predicted it. He, he told in Mark 14, 27 to 30, and this is at the Last Supper, so this is shortly after the, the original communion that we just celebrated and Caleb did a great job with. Um, Jesus said to them, you will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And the disciples understood that Jesus is referring to himself as the shepherd and them as the sheep. And Jesus continued in 28, but after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. So Peter declares, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. So here's Peter with his strong faith adamantly saying, Lord, even if the rest leave you, I'm going to stick by your side. And as we're going to see very shortly within a few hours, lo and behold, Jesus was right. Spoiler alert, not a shock there. But Peter falls away. And so we're going to look at what happened. So we get the story of Peter's denial in all four of our Gospels. Uh, so there's the different references. We're going to look at, at John's version, beginning in John 18, verse 15. And again, this is just, just hours after Peter just said, Lord, even if everybody else leaves you, I will not. But Jesus, at, at this point, Jesus has been arrested and is being taken into He's into custody, and so uh, Peter and John and uh, follow the crowd. And so they are in the courtroom. Peter's in the co courtroom, courtyard. Jesus, in, in essence, their courtroom at that point uh, as the trials are starting. But uh, verse 25, meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? And he denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? And again, Peter denied it. I'm sorry, I've jumped ahead. I'm looking at the wrong slide here. Verse 15 first, which is what's on the screen. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest courtyard. Since this is John's gospel, he never refers to himself. When he always says another disciple or sometimes the one who Jesus loved, he's referring to himself. So, so, when we, so there's Peter and John. Um, so because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest courtyard. So there's, there's our courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back and spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter, and he replied, I am not. So there's the first denial. Then we get the other two that I was starting to read, but here they are for you to read along. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warm, warming himself, so they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not, denial number two. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? And again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the rooster began to crow. So, a couple things in, in this set of verses. So, when Jesus is arrested, again, Peter, being a leader, strong faith, wanting to defend Jesus, actually took out his sword and cut off the ear of a servant, which is the reference there in verse 26. 
And in a couple of the other Gospels, uh, it mentions that as soon as this rooster crows, Jesus looks at Peter. They're able to make eye contact, and Peter immediately knows and realizes what he had just done. That despite all of his faith, despite all of his assurances, he scattered just like Jesus said that he would. So the question is, what happened to Peter's faith? How could he go from being a leader of the apostles, have strong enough faith to walk on the water, to then, as soon as he gets challenged, he starts denying it? So I tried to find this great quote from, you know, some great theologian or some, you know, real heavyweight. And so I finally, I finally found the perfect one from that great theologian, Mike Tyson, that says, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And this is, uh, he, he made this comment when he was preparing to fight Evander Holyfield, I believe it was. Um, and it, it's so true. We all have a plan until something goes wrong. It's like, you know, this is, you know, for the graduates, this is my five-year plan. Until there's a bump in the road, then what happens? Or, you know, this is how we're going to do this or that, and then something goes wrong, plans go sideways. How do we react? And so this is what happened to Peter. It's easy, you know, when you're following Jesus and he's getting, you know, all of these followers. It's, you know, it's easy to stand up here in front of the church and go, yeah, I'm a Christian. I, know, I love Jesus. It's not as easy when we get out in the real world with our coworkers, our friends, things like that, that maybe aren't believers, maybe they're very anti-Christianity for, you know, various reasons and things like that, to then try to stand up to them or have a conversation with them. And they, then they start, you know, maybe making fun of you or don't want to be friends with you, things like that. And now, you know, that's, we're getting punched in the mouth for our faith. Will we stand up for that faith? I think it's equally as important to not just focus on Peter's denials, but look at what happened after the fact to kind of finish up the story. So after the denials, Peter was reinstated by Jesus. Oh, I forgot to mention, because this is youth group and not just Sunday school, normally I collect cell phones in this basket. The youth were probably nervous I had this up here with me. But I, the basket's not big enough for all your cell phones. So, uh, so that's, that's why the basket was up here. I forgot about that. But I wanted to, to read this passage, and I actually dug out. This is my Bible from when I was in youth group. This is my youth study Bible that I still have. Laura would call that hoarding. I call it memories. But after, after Jesus has been resurrected, uh, at one point he meets up, with, uh, meets up with Peter. And this is from John 21. This is verses 15 to 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I think it's, it's completely intentional that Jesus asks him three times, mirroring the three denials. So he gives Peter a chance three times to make up for the three denials. And so Peter is completely reinstated and continues to be a leader among the apostles. When the Pentecost happens in Acts 2, which is the Holy Spirit arrival here on earth, Peter is the one that stands up and preaches to the thousands gathered there that day. And then throughout the rest of his life, Peter leads the young church. He, in essence, he is the first pastor of the, the Christian church as it begins to grow in the, the post-Jesus world. Uh, he mainly spends most of the rest of his life in Jerusalem leading the church from there. He does eventually 
basically take some missions trips to Antioch, Corinth, and then uh, eventually uh, lives the last few years of his life in Rome, spreading the gospel there. And he repeatedly had opportunities and was challenged in his faith, and this time made the right decision. This time he stood up for his faith. In Acts 4, when they, the Sanhedrin, saw the courage of Peter, they were astonished. Here he's been arrested, drugged before the Sanhedrin for preaching about Jesus, and yet he stands up for his faith, and they were astonished by his faith. One more chapter later, they've been arrested again, because in chapter 4, they are told, we will release you, but you need to stop preaching about Jesus. Well, he didn't, nor did any of the other apostles. So, chapter 5, they're in front of the Sanhedrin again, and they're like, we warned you not to preach about Jesus. You need to stop doing this. And so Peter's reply in 529 says, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. So this time Peter's getting punched in the mouth. They're getting challenged in his faith. And they are, Peter is making the right decision. So my question for you is, when you are challenged in your faith, how will you respond? Whether it's from a friend, coworker, random stranger, you know, if somebody ever asks you, you really believe in that Bible stuff, that Jesus, all those myths, will you be willing to stand up for your faith? Peter's own words in 1 Peter 4, 12 to 16 says this, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the suffering of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed with his glory, or when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. So Peter tells us to be proud of the fact that we are a follower of Jesus, and this is, this is our goal. So do you have a strong enough faith to do that? And if you have questions about that, I don't know that I'd be able to do that. Well, what can you do to strengthen that faith? What steps can you take? Maybe it's to join the discipleship class here on Wednesday nights, to learn a little bit more And while that's geared towards teaching others, I can tell you one of the easiest ways to learn is to teach. I've learned more about the Bible teaching small groups and teaching your youth over the last year than I probably have just from reading and studying it myself. Now, typically at the end of the youth group lesson, we then move into small group time, and we're not going to do that. I'm not going to break you up into groups of 10 to discuss, but I always have questions to talk about in small group. Well, maybe not always. Sometimes I forget. But normally, I try and have questions. So when I had done these lessons for the youth back in the past, these are a couple of questions that we had. So if God asked you to get out of, to walk on the water, get out of the boat and walk on the water, would you have enough faith to do so? Why do you think somebody who had the faith to get out of the boat could fail three times? Because we've all probably failed at times like this. How does your faith compare to the post-denial Peter's faith? Would you be able to stand up if you got punched in the mouth for your faith? And we spent about half the small group time typically reviewing our lesson and the other half just trying to get to know the kids and what they're going through and kind of let them talk. So I always have a question about, you know, what struggles or positive things have you had this week? And so that's what our small group looks like. But so, so that's the story of why John 18 is our theme. Because, and the tagline there is facing challenges to our faith by growing in the word. I want our youth focused on deepening their faith because they're going to be challenged, whether it's at school, with their friends, somewhere along the line, maybe not till they're adults, but that's not likely. I want them to be in a position to have a strong enough faith that they can stand up to getting you know, punched in the mouth to keep going back to 
the great theologian Mike Tyson's example. And so, in conclusion, I ask you, you know, where is your faith? Do you have the faith of Peter? Maybe you've, maybe you've actually never taken that, that step of faith. Maybe you're not quite sure or where you stand. You have some questions. I would be happy to talk to you after the fact about that. Pastor Dick thinks he has the day off, but he's available too, and I think he'd be willing to, to work today if, uh, if you had some questions about that. Maybe you don't have any more questions, but you've never actually taken that step and said, yes, I am a follower of Jesus. I'd be, and as would Dick or any of our other leaders here at the church, we would be happy to take you on that final step, that first step of faith today as well. Maybe you've failed like Peter failed. You've walked away from your faith or whatever that looks like in your life. Maybe today can be the day that you take that step back. So the final question I just leave you with is, if you have faith, you're going to face challenges. So is your faith strong enough that when you are challenged like Peter was challenged, would you be able to stand up for your faith or would you deny it like Peter? And hopefully none of you, even if you truly admit it, are leaning that direction. And if you're worried, then I would encourage you this week to take some steps to strengthen that faith or talk to myself or Dick or somebody about what you could do to improve your faith. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for, for second chances, Lord. I thank you that Peter was forgiven for the mistakes that he made uh, and was welcomed back into a position of leadership uh, and that, that he was able to continue to preach your word and bring thousands to the faith through his ministry, Lord. Lord, I just pray for each of us that we are able to have that walk as well, Lord, that, that hopefully we can grow our faith enough, that we can deepen our faith enough that when we are challenged, wherever those challenges come from, that we are able to stand up and defend our faith as we are called to do, Lord. Lord, I pray for anybody that hasn't made that decision yet, that maybe today is the day that they will acknowledge you, accept you as, your sa as their Savior for the first time today, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that if that's the case for anybody, Lord, that they are they're willing to, to talk to myself, Pastor Dick, or, or somebody else here at the church about how to take that step. Uh, for the rest of us, Lord, that have already made that decision, Lord, I just pray that this week that we take the steps to continue to improve and deepen our faith, Lord. We love you. We thank you for our many blessings. We pray this in your name. Amen. If you all would like to stand, we're going to sing our final worship song. Sometimes you got to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, pray Sometimes you gotta stand down the giants, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere.
if you if you all want to sit down, if you want to, or you can stand up. I don't really care. Up to you. <laughs> if you want to close your eyes and bow your heads for closing prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the amazing service that we have had today. And also that no matter how formally or informally I do this prayer, I can't be wrong because you're listening to us regardless. We thank you so much for Youth Sunday and that we are all able to get involved here today in the church. We thank you for all of our visitors that we got today and hopefully that they'll come back. Um, thank you so much just amazing for the amazing service that we've had today and that we hope, <laughs> sorry. And I pray that we all have a great week and if we don't, that we all know that we can lean on you regardless. In, your, uh, in the Lord's name, amen.